crying, a seemingly ubiquitous behavior that is found already in infants. Crying is a behavior that is found across all ages from the moment that we are born until we're old. An important question for us to ask is, why do we cry? This question and so much more will be covered in this video. Welcome to Sight. Before we can answer the question of why we cry, we first need to address the question of what is crying. Now, this may seem like a silly question to ask, but it is an important one. Crying is a behavior that is easily identifiable in others. Although crying may look differently in different people, there are some underlying characteristics that seem universal. For instance, when we cry, we might shed tears, we might sob, sniff, we might have a creaky delivery when we speak, we might even make certain facial movements, like grinning, for example. Crying is also often accompanied by some emotional experience such as sadness or distress. As previously mentioned, crying is present since birth and continues throughout our lifespan. We also find it to be universal across all cultures. An interesting question to ask is, are humans the only species that cry? The answer to this question is tricky and will depend on how we define crying. When looking at other primates, like most monkeys and apes, we do find that they do make certain vocalizations when they are in distress. If we choose to define crying as a vocalization intended to communicate one state of distress, then most other monkeys and apes also engage in the behavior we refer to as crying. However, humans are unique in the way that we communicate our distress and pain through crying. Specifically, the tearful sobbing that we engage in is not found in other species. Thus, if we define crying as this tearful sobbing, then humans are the only species that quote-unquote cry. Now that we have discussed what crying is, the next question we should ask is, why do we cry? From an evolutionary perspective, this is an important question to ask because the physical act of crying is quite costly from an energy consumption point of view. Crying is also incapacitating to some extent, which makes us more vulnerable. One potential explanation, as alluded to earlier, is that crying is a means to communicate our distress to others. Infants, for example, may cry to signal to their parents that they are in a state of distress. Adults, on the other hand, may cry in order to elicit support from other adults. This view on the function of crying makes sense. Humans and other non-human primates may use crying to signal support from others when, for example, they're in danger. However, this view is not complete. This is because there seems to be several different reasons or functions of crying beyond signaling distress. Us humans may also cry, for instance, when we feel sad, embarrassed, stressed, angry, exhausted. Infants may cry when they're hungry. We may even cry when we feel happy. Because human crying can represent several different things, it is difficult to make a comparison between the crying that humans make and the quote-unquote crying made by other primates. While human crying may represent several different feelings, it is not known to what extent other non-human primates share these same feelings. Needless to say, crying is quite a complicated behavior and it may represent different things within the human species and it may also reflect different things when comparing one species to another. Thus far, we have discussed crying from an evolutionary perspective. Another perspective worth exploring is a more psychological one. From this perspective, 
Crying could, for instance, be seen as a coping mechanism in the sense that it gives us immediate relief. The idea is that crying has positive effects on both our mental and physical well-being. One famous psychologist who was a proponent of this view was our good old friend Sigmund Freud. Freud specifically argued that the tears we shed when we cry are involuntary reflexes that discharge affect so that a large part of that affect disappears. In other words, Freud argued that crying is our way of releasing our negative emotions and in that sense feel relief. Freud is not the only advocate for the view that crying may be beneficial. In fact, in Western folk psychology, crying is indeed seen as beneficial, and many Western clinicians will even actively encourage their patients to cry. Moving on from Western folk psychology, there are some formal theories that also are in line with the idea that crying may be beneficial. One of these theories is the psychodynamic approach to crying. In line with what Freud argued, this approach to crying argues that crying is not only beneficial, but blocking tears is actually a form of repression that may cause psychological damage. In a very different theory, there's a biochemical approach to crying, which argues that tears may be a way for the body to get rid of harmful toxins. Thus, while the biochemical theory and the psychodynamic approach to crying may differ, they are similar in the sense that they both argue that crying is beneficial. This conclusion is also in line with the Western folk psychology discussed earlier. Taken together, these theories suggest that crying is beneficial as a coping behavior. To determine whether these theories may be correct, we should take a look at the research. There has been several studies conducted on the immediate effects of crying. Unfortunately, however, thus far, the results have been quite mixed. On one hand, you have some studies that do show support for the notion that crying is beneficial. For instance, one study showed that over 50% of the participants reported feeling better mentally after crying and about one-third of the participants reported feeling better physically after crying. On the other hand, there are other studies that show the opposite effect. These studies show that crying may actually have negative immediate effects rather than positive ones. One such study found that people who cry while watching a sad movie felt sadder and more depressed afterwards as compared to those who didn't cry while watching the movie. Because of these conflicting results, more research is needed for a more conclusive answer on the question of whether crying is beneficial or not. In this video, we have discussed different reasons and theories for why we cry. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.